the rent is due, honey, okay? I'm using this right here to pay for everything. The importance of self-sufficiency. Write down if this is my main or my side. And I'm not talking about women or men, okay? I'm talking about money. It's the money. What's up you guys? It's me. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are cosplaying as Ariel. <laughs> In my perfume video, I did like a poison ivy green. I'm just feeling these ginger braids and whoever I come up with is who I'm gonna be for that day. So today, it's giving Ariel. So in today's video, I decided that I really wanted to take you guys along with me to do my budgeting for the month of October. I recently filmed a video where I told you guys everything that I wish I knew when moving into this apartment. And in that video towards the end, I talked about budgeting a little bit and I've always wanted to do a sort of, a little bit of a finance video. And maybe I've just been watching one too many Graham Stefan videos, to be honest. Personal finance is something that I've become more and more passionate about as the years have gone on. And the more that I live with myself and pay for everything, and budget month to month, the more that I really have an appreciation for personal finance and I really wanna share with you guys how I personally budget for my months, living alone in my 20s. So I do currently fund everything that I do. I am in control of all of my finances. I will be showing you guys every single thing that I put on my calendar on a monthly basis. The only expenses that I'm not going to be disclosing are my car and my housing costs. I just wanna keep them private for right now. But everything else, I'll be listing the prices of which I'm going to budget. So I do plan on my iPad. This is going to be mainly focused on finances and most things that you're going to do in your day-to-day -day life cost money. So this is just going to be a life and finance planning video. I really feel like I have my monthly planning down to a T at this point. I've been doing it for nine months and I feel like this system really works for me. I've tried physical planners for finance planning, but I just feel like the digital calendar really works out for me and I cross it out day by day for the entire month. So I'm going to show you guys just so you guys get a sense of how I plan for each and every month when it comes to spending money. So as you guys can see, I have a couple of notes here already. I have notes for my YouTube channel. Channel. I have notes for my monthly planner. Today we're just going to be doing a separate screen for October so I'm going to make a new note. So in my photos you can actually use a photo to create a note with instead of using just their preset quick note. Right when I got this iPad I did uh, download a couple of different templates for planning and I really like this one so we're going to be using this one right here. This is just a blank calendar template and the first thing I like to do is number each and every day for the month and then I'm going to kind of make it a little bit of an aesthetic choice. Okay I pick the colors that I want. I make it for the month's theme. So this month is October. I think I'm going to do a couple of browns. As you can see on the top here I did pick some colors already from my previous planning. I literally am just free balling on this. I don't have a case on my iPad right now, but I do have the paper light case. I've just been too lazy to apply it, but I do know that it would make my writing a little bit smoother. So if you are a little bit anal about the writing, definitely look into a paper light case or anything that makes your writing more natural on the iPad. But for me, it's not really that big of a deal. I just really enjoy being a little creative when it comes to my planning. Also, it helps me keep the attention of whatever I'm planning. I just feel like it's cuter whenever my planner looks cuter, whenever it looks dull and boring, it makes me less likely to want to pay attention to what is actually written on the calendar. So this is just for me and my own visual purposes. If you guys want to see like a whole tutorial on GoodNotes, definitely look them up on YouTube because I actually ended up doing that um, in order to be able to do this quickly. Also, I've been doing it for a couple of months now. So it's just second nature to me at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my little aesthetic drawings on the month of October and number the days. Okay, now that we have decorated, made it cute and numbered all of the days, the next thing we're going to do is place important dates on these days. So I have a list of important dates that I need to put on this calendar. So let's get started. We're going to use the same little cute little color. So I have an orange and brown theme going on here. So the first thing we're going to do is October 1st. The rent is due, honey. Okay. I put my rent and water kind of all together and then I'm just going to make it cute. So just decorated it a little bit. Going to use like a lighter orange to make it more prominent. And then also my dog's name is Lucky. So his flea and tick medicine is due. And I put this on 
here too. I'm going to put it in a different color just because I like to write this down because I don't want to forget his flea and take medicine. And like I said, this is going to be finances and life. So I just put everything on the same calendar. This way I can remember everything at once and not have to flip through different planners. Um, I do have a physical planner for my um, personal life and I do use that every now and then when I have like a big day with a bunch of stuff to do. But on the regular basis, honestly, I mainly use this digital calendar that I've created for myself. So that is for the first. And then if I want to, I can actually move this stuff around because I do think it's too high and at the very top of this calendar in this area right here I like to write whatever shift I have for that day so let's say I was working like 9 to 5 I would put 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and I would make that the shift however I don't know what my schedule is for October yet because I'm still in September I also write down when I'm off as well so I'm going to leave this here for now the next important date I wrote all these on my phone so I wouldn't forget you guys the next important date is October 2nd actually and I am getting my first infusion if you guys are new here hello thank you guys so much for coming first of all second of all I have an autoimmune disease um, I have three kind of like all sisters and brothers getting along here and my main one that I have is sarcoidosis and uveitis it affects just everything if you really want to deep dive I am going to be doing a separate video into everything that goes on with that I um, do have a lot of things in my life that it does affect but this being one of them and this is going to be a financial thing as well first infusion I um, recently am having a medicine switch over if you guys have been keeping up with me and I'm finally getting the medicine that I have been needing and it is called Renflexis it is similar to Remicade if you know anybody that has any sort of like I think it's even treated for like Crohn's disease a lot of inflammatory diseases um, I do have an inflammatory disease and this is something that is said to help I've never had an infusion before I previously took Humira which is self injectable it's a shot that you just self administer so this is a new world for me and I'm honestly kind of nervous but I'm having the first infusion on the second that is estimated I'm estimating it to be around $75 um, I'm supposed to be getting this infusion once a month you'll see in this month of October I actually have another infusion at the end of the month um, just because I think that was the only day they had available but if you guys have had anything done with the specialists before you don't get billed until after after the procedure is done and I also am not going to know the exact amount of money I need to pay until the procedure is completed um, once I start going into a routine of doing this obviously it'll be more clear how much each infusion is to put it in perspective my shot that I was taking previously was Humira and it was only like five dollars per unit and I was taking two units um, a month it then escalated to four units a month so that's twenty dollars a month for that shot for this specifically I don't know how much it's going to be but I am estimating based on me talking to my insurance company directly and also talking to the doctors that are going to be involved in this I'm going to estimate that this is going to cost $75 it could cost more and it could cost less but I am just going to put estimation 75 just so that I am aware that I do have to pay for this this month and so that I get like a little bit of a ballpark on how much I'm going to have to pay. Hopefully it is less because paying $75 for an infusion every month to keep myself alive sounds exhausting. <laughs> but I did put estimation 75 bucks just because I really don't know. I'll give you guys a better update if I ever do one of these videos again. Along with the infusion, my car insurance is also due on this day. My car insurance due. This automatically draws out of my account, meaning I don't even have to think about it. It just automatically comes out. But I still write it down. This way I am aware on when it's getting drawn out because sometimes the worst thing is when you have an unexpected bill just randomly come out of your account and you have no idea why. So I just like to put them anyway, even if I'm not manually doing it there are bills like the rent and my car note which is next that I do manually pay and I type it in but for things that automatically get drawn out of my account like my car insurance my phone bill Wi-Fi stuff like that I still write it down this way I know what day it's coming out of the account so that is for October 2nd the next day is October 7th and that is when my car note is due so I pay for my car monthly and I also have my insurance monthly as well so we are going to put Car note on the 7th the next day that I have on here is October 13th and that is going to be my credit card I have two credit cards that I pay monthly on I am working on getting that overall statement down and you will see that later on in this video but for right now I still pay the monthly on it the next day I'm gonna write down is October 16th this is actually my friend Niante's birthday so I'm gonna put this in a different color than the fall theme the reason why I'm writing her birthday down even though I already know it and she made sure that I knew it okay I am not good with dates so that's why I really love using this digital calendar. I write down everyone's birthday, even though I already knew Niante's birthday. The main reason for writing it down right now is because there are financial 
obligations going along with her birthday. So with her birthday, she may be having a birthday dinner. I'm still not sure if it's happening or not, but I'm budgeting for myself just in case it does happen because it's better to be prepared than to be sorry. And also I wanna give her a present. So all of that together, I'm estimating it's gonna be about $150. And then I'm just highlighting it so that I don't forget. Next day we need to write down is October 18th and this is my second credit card and also my Wi-Fi bill is due that day. This minimum balance is $72. And then my Wi-Fi bill, which is $50. And I'm just going to kind of move this around because I don't like the way that I wrote this. Next important day is the next day, October 19th. That is when my Hulu <laughs> comes out of my account. And I know that seems really random, but you guys, I always need to remember this because I actually have it attached to my Cash App account, not my regular bank account. And sometimes I don't have money in my Cash App account because it's in my bank account. So I need to make sure that I transfer the money every single time. I love it. And I have every other streaming service thanks to my mom and dad. So thank you guys. I think I have HBO Max, Paramount Plus, um, and Netflix and that is split between my mom and dad so I'm on both of their accounts my mom is on my Hulu account we're kind of all mixing around with the streaming services but the one that I personally pay for is my Hulu account so I always make sure to write that down and make sure that I have the money in that account for that day the next day to write down is October 20th and this is my friend Brittany's wedding I'm super super excited for her I'm gonna put this in blue so that it stands out from my regular colors and again I'm writing this down because it is an important date to remember for me but also because I need to financially prepare for this wedding so for her wedding day I am planning on getting her a wedding gift obviously and that is going to cost money so I'm estimating it's going to cost about $100 so I just put the estimated cost underneath of it and then I highlight it so that I don't forget about the day I don't like that color at all okay this color is prettier for the highlighting and then I just take all of it, move it over into the middle. I'm taking off of work for this day as well. So notice how the other days I kind of left a little bit of space at the top, like for Nayanti's birthday, I kind of left a little bit of space for this. And also with this tool, you can always just take everything and move it up or down. But I like to leave a little bit of space at the top of each day for when I actually work that day so I can write down the shift at the top just to keep myself on track. I like to remember what days I worked and what days I didn't because if you are new here, I have two serving jobs. So my schedule is not the same every week. It changes all the time. Sometimes I have three days off. Sometimes I have no days off. Sometimes I have four days off, one day off. So it just depends. So I like to keep track of every day that I worked because I do keep a record of everything that I do. I keep a record of all of my checkout slips when it comes to serving and tip count hourly count things like that so I do like to make sure I am aware of what days I work because there have been times where I forgot did I work this weekend or no because there's so much stuff going on so I always make sure to do that but for this day specifically I don't really need to leave any space because I am taking off for her wedding the next day that I have on here is October 26 which is right underneath and that is the day that my phone bill is due before I moved here I was underneath my mom's phone plan and I was just like an added user when I moved out one of the first things I did was create my own phone bill and my own phone plan so I am the sole provider for this phone bill when I was moving into this apartment I kind of just redid my entire financial identity and I took everything off of my parents so anything that my parents were previously paying for I had a car a couple of years ago that my dad was helping me with I ended up selling it and getting my own car so my car is in my name as well I just really value the importance of self-sufficiency and independence i always have i always will so anything that i can do to make myself more self-reliant i definitely do so with the phone bill i was attached to her account i took myself off of that account and i made my own account when you're moving this is something that i've always heard of but never really took seriously when you are moving into your own apartment there are so many deals and specials you can get on certain things for example for the phone bill for the one personal line that i have i use xfinity mobile and i also use xfinity for my TV as well. They had a deal where you can get my Wi-Fi and my phone bill for very, very cheap. And I also ended up getting a new phone as a part of that deal. So I'm paying for my phone monthly and the service all together. Previously on my mom's plan, I was paying separately for my phone bill through like a whole other loan service. And my mom was paying for the service. With this deal, I was able to get my phone paid for monthly as well as my service all for only $80, which is less money than what I would have been paying the other way if I was still attached to my mother's account. So there are perks to living alone and to getting your own servicing. Definitely 
really look into the best services for your phone and Wi-Fi and the best deals when you're moving out alone because you want to save as much money as possible. And if one provider doesn't allow for any promotions or deals, trust me, there's another one out there that will. So definitely look into that when you're moving out. But I do have my phone bill that comes out on the 26th and it is $80. Okay, the next day is going to be the next day. It's October 27th, and that is when my electric bill is gonna come, and this is something that I manually pay for, so I definitely make sure to always write down when it's due so that I can go on the website and pay it. I do have what's called, I believe, a budget method or a budget paying system where essentially I have a set amount for the bill every single month, and if I do go over that, it accumulates at the end of the year and you pay the remaining balance so for example when i first moved into this apartment my electricity bill was usually around 60 dollars normally like just with the heating and cooling and everything um, i moved in january january 19th to be exact so i was using the heat a lot once summer came that bill doubled i normally pay about if I wasn't on this budgeting system, I usually pay about 120 to maybe even $140 just for this tiny apartment to cool it at the rate that I was cooling it, which is fine with me. I would rather pay for air conditioning than burn up in here because air conditioning, being comfortable in my house is very important to me and I am willing to pay whatever I need to pay. However, if you are not prepared for that big jump in your electricity bill, especially that's one that always jumps up and down for most people, um, you can, at least for my company, do what's called, I think it's called budget billing even, where essentially they give you a set amount based on your use. So mine ended up being $60. I pay $60 roughly every single month. And at the end of the month, whatever was left over, so for example, from that 120 or 140, that gets combined and I put that at the end. So in the beginning, I was actually paying over what I was using. I maybe had an electric bill of 45 to $50, but I was paying 60 every time. So that gets added in to the overall amount that I have left over once the year is over. I hope that made a little bit of sense. If you want to know more about budget billing, definitely look into your own electric company. They will be able to give you a better description, but that's how I understand it from my point of view. So I know that I'm going to be paying about $60 every single time. Okay, the last date that I have on here that I need to be aware of is October 30th, the day before Halloween. And this is the day of my second infusion. I am going to write this down. Again, I'm gonna estimate that it's gonna be about $75 and I'm just going to take note of this because I do need to be aware of when these infusions are because I do need to go to the hospital and be there for the entire day, y'all. I am not looking forward to being there for the entire day, but I do need to know when these are so that I'm aware of these calendar updates. I actually don't have any doctor's visits in the month of October, which is rare for me. I always have at least one doctor visit in the month of whatever. I probably have about one or two in November, so I'm cool with not going to the doctor, but I do have to go to the hospital. So you win some, you lose some. But if I had any other dates, like, you know, doctor's dates, anything where things are due, I am going to write them down. I do also like to note that I do put my YouTube responsibilities on my calendar as well, but I kind of do it as time goes on. Since this is the beginning of the month, this is just the stuff that I initially write down. So let's say I wanted to post a video on Monday, I would, you know, write, and then once it was finished, I would kind of check it off. And what I end up doing each day is once everything's finished, I check off each thing that I did. So I did the infusion, did the car insurance, I paid it. And then what I do is I literally just cross the day out like that every single day for the entire month. So that's what I usually end up doing. Um, a lot of this stuff I end up doing as time goes on, like the shifts, for example, the times and days that I need to do those. Um, if I have things on a whim. As far as the month of October, this is the only video that I currently know that will go up in October. So I will put this for October 1st. I'm going to highlight it here. And then I'm also going to kind of outline it a little bit. And sometimes I choose to do this with everything. Sometimes I choose to do it with just that. For example, it's only on that one right now, but for aesthetic reasons, like I can go back to Niantes and kind of do like, you know, a little something like that. Whatever's going to make me more excited for the day. Obviously this has the least to do with the actual finances of the day. It's just to make me happy and to like the way my calendar looks. One of the things that I do as well for each day is I write down when I'm going to get paid. So I'm going to move some of this stuff up. I do have two different jobs. They have two different pay periods, meaning I do get paid every single week. So what I'm gonna do is, and I like to put this in green, because money is green, payday babes, okay? We're going to write payday on each of these days. So the good thing about good notes is that I can actually just write it one time and then copy and paste it 
on each day. So I currently have the 6th, 13th, 20th, and 27th. Those are my paydays for the month of October. Now the next thing I'm going to do is write down if this is my main or my side. So what I like to do, and I'm not talking about women or men, okay? I'm talking about money. So what we're gonna do is I have a main job that I consider my main job because it gives me more of the income, and then I have my side job, which still allows me to be able to be more flexible with my finances, but it's not do or die. So I just like having it as a little bit of side cash. So on October 6th is the day that I'm getting paid by the side hustle. So what I'm gonna do is just put in parentheses side. The next one I'm going to put main. This keeps my expectations afloat for how much money I'm going to be receiving for each week. So if I'm expecting to make X amount of money and then it's significantly lower, I know it's because I got paid for my side job rather than my main, if that makes sense. And based on that information, I am now able to do one of my last steps in budgeting, which is putting what bills I need to pay for each Friday. So for October 6th, the things that I need to pay for are the car insurance, my infusion, and the car note. My rent is due on the 1st of October, but that has been previously paid from the month of September. So for example, right now, as I'm filming this, it is September 25th. This payday coming up, I'm going to be using that money to pay the remainder for my October rent. So I already paid September, obviously. We're already through the month of September. I'm using the last week of September to pay for October's rent, and that's just going to continue to go throughout my month. So for Friday, we're not going to be paying the rent for October because it's already paid from September. And with that being said, I did put car insurance on here, but I actually already have the car insurance paid from the previous month of September as well. So actually, we only need to pay the car note and the infusion. So I'm going to put car note and then infusion. I put that on top of the payday this way I'm aware of what exactly I need to pay and I don't overspend when I do get paid. I am a recovered spender, okay? I still have the urges and tendencies so I need to make sure that whenever I get paid I write down exactly what I need to pay so that I don't go and buy something and then I'm like, oh shit, the rent is due and I don't have the money, you know what I mean? We're not, we're not about that life anymore. We have priorities and responsibilities. Okay, so that is for October 6th payday. The October 13th payday, this is where I'm getting my main source of income. So what I'm gonna do with that money is we are going to pay half of the rent. We're also going to be paying the credit cards one and two. We're also going to be paying the Wi-Fi bill and the Hulu bill. And we are going to be paying for Britney's wedding and we're going to be paying for Nayate's birthday. So this one is a big chunk of money and I just love to make sure that I have everything written down that I need to pay for. So if you guys can see on the main calendar, I'm using this right here from the 13th to pay for everything to do with the next week. So Nayate's birthday, the Wi-Fi, credit card, Hulu, Britney's wedding. Even though Britney's wedding does fall on a payday, obviously I still use the previous week's payday to pay for that. So that's why there's so much stuff underneath of the 13th, but that is everything that I need to pay for with that. The next payday is the 20th. This is from the side. And all we're going to be using this for is my phone bill and electric bill. And lastly, for the 27th, we're going to be paying for car insurance, which is for November 2nd. So again, the end of the previous month is what I pay for the beginning of the next month. So the car insurance for November is going to be on the 27th check. Also, the other half of the rent is going to be on this check. And my second infusion is going to be on this check. This amount of money that we're getting from the main is only going to be paying for this amount right here and also into the month of November that is not even plotted yet. So I'm already thinking ahead towards the end of the last month to get me through the beginning of the next month because as you can see in the beginning of October we have a lot of stuff due. The rent is due, car insurance due, we have an infusion that was not an expected bill to be paying but now I'm paying it. That's also in the beginning of that month. So I know that a lot of stuff hits me between the first and the seventh so I like to make sure that I'm prepared for it in in that last week of whatever month I'm in, this case being October. Now, the month of October is almost over, you guys. The last thing I like to do on my calendar before the month even starts is go to the bottom where it says notes. I like to put any goals that don't have to do with the immediate expenses. So everything that I put under these paydays is stuff that needs to get paid, rain, sleet, hail, or shine, like they need to get paid. And if they do not get paid, we're gonna be having a problem. But this bottom stuff with the notes is just stuff that I would like to pay if I have extra money left over in between those four paydays. So for me, I really want to put $500 into my savings account this month. I really want to put $500 
towards my credit card balance. And I would also like to put $100 into my Roth IRA. My Roth IRA is something that I've been neglecting for a very long time and my dad has been getting on my ass about it so I really need to start putting money in there. So these are just three things that I want to do. They're not things that I need to do but they're things that I want to do for that month and I usually always end up getting one or two if not all three finished. It's always a goal of mine to be able to get at least one of the goals done within the month. If I just am having a rough month that month and I don't have as much money as I thought I did, as long as these bills in the payday column are paid for i am a happy girl i just wanted to take a second to tell you guys some stuff that i did not end up putting into writing on this calendar any other expenses like groceries gas any type of outside dining or anything that i just randomly pay for i don't necessarily plot on the calendar because I do know that my paydays usually do not consume all of the bills that are written under there. Everything I wrote for the 13th or the 6th, it's not going to consume my entire check. So whatever I have left over, I tend to spend it on things that are not exactly going to fall on that day every single time. For example, I don't need gas every single week. And sometimes I end up using my extra money to be spontaneous. Like last month when I bought a bunch of Brandon Blackwood bags. Do you think I went grocery shopping for the entire month that month? No, I did not because I was buying bags instead. I tend to just use whatever extra money I have. Things that are not as important to me. For you, groceries might be an important thing that you need to plot down. But for me specifically, they are not. And neither is my gas. Like I said, definitely do this for your specific life. If you have a long commute to work, Gas is something you need to be plotting down, okay? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. I just wanted to clear that up because I know that once I started editing, I realized that, hey, I didn't write down some stuff that a lot of people do. And I just wanted to tell you guys why. So that is the completed month of October, you guys. Like I said, as the month goes on, I'll put the shifts, I'll put the videos that I need to edit and upload for that day. But this is the main gist of how I budget and how I keep my life on track every single month living alone in my 20s. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I had a lot of fun planning with you guys and this is something that I genuinely get joy out of doing is personal finance. Who would have thought I would be saying that? I really love personal finance. I've been watching Graham Stephan, listening to my dad, reading books. You guys saw I'm reading Rich Dad Poor Dad right now. I am still not finished it because I'm the worst reader of life, but I need to finish it. I love that book and I am just getting into my personal finance. I'm looking over here at my bookshelf, got the four hour work week going. I just have so many things that I'm willing to learn and explore about finance and this is just the beginning for me. Moving out has definitely taught me discipline to say the least when it comes to finances and honestly it just translated into a lot of different parts of my life and I'm so grateful for being able to successfully live on my own and not have to rely on anybody due to me budgeting the way that I do and keeping my life on track the way that I do. I never thought I would get to this point but I'm so immensely proud of myself for doing so and I hope that this video at least helped you or inspired you to be able to keep better track of your finances keep better track of your life just in general thank you guys so much for watching I love you and I will see you in my next one bye